way. The rest of us, we're going to kick off a new series called, like I said uh, earlier, Games People Play. Okay? And uh, so I've got some board games up here. How many of you would say you like board games? Raise your hand. A lot of you do. It's $880 million a year business so far right now. Um, and games are all around us, all right? There, there's games everywhere. And uh, we're going to do this series. We're going to, um, today, as you can tell, we're going to play a little Pictionary, uh, right? But in this series, what we're going to do is uh, we're, gonna, we're going to talk about some different topics, some different subjects and things like that, and use the idea of games... Um, as kind of an overarching theme, okay? Everyone likes games. Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people like games. So some of you raise your hand for board games. How many of you would prefer video games? Raise your hand. Yeah, that's a $6 billion a year industry. Um, how many of you would prefer outdoor games like cornhole or, or beanbag? So, yeah, so that's a $3.6 billion a year industry. So games are all around us. Now, the big one, sports how many of you would just prefer to play sports that's because it really is a game think about this 500 billion dollar industry okay in the US alone for sports and there really is at the end of it just a game right but people are getting paid incredible amounts of money to play those games which is kind of cool but anyway I wish I could have done that but I'm certainly not an athlete really um, I'm a wannabe athlete but that's about it so games are all around us and you can see from here we're going to we're basically we're gonna try to talk about some difficult topics but in kind of like in a lot way as much as we can, right? Kind of using the fun of games to talk about some difficult stuff, some maybe some painful stuff, some, some stuff that isn't all rosy and fun, but we're going to try to hopefully use that overarching theme to make it more bearable, okay? And we're going to kind of bounce around a little bit. If you're new with us, we spent uh, 18 weeks working through the book of James, which is toward the end of your Bible. So now we're kind of going to do some topical stuff, talk about different things, and we're going to use games. It's like operation, for instance, okay? Um, what biblical, we're just kind of brainstorm here because I need some help in this series. If we were going to say operation, what is a biblical theme that we could talk about like operation? Anyone? Huh? At, sure, right? Formation of Adam, right? So we could do that. Any other thoughts, ideas? Crossing the Red Sea. Okay, so... It was like, yeah, like Operation Cross the Red Sea. Sure. Any other thoughts? Huh? Okay. Sure. Yeah, because in Operate, you take the, you don't eat. Yeah, so God's going to take out the bad parts and put in good parts. And there's all kinds of things we could talk about with Operation. What about Angry Birds? How many of you have that on your phone, Angry Birds, or did? It's kind of an older game. Anyway, we're talking about anger. Okay, for sure. Um, we're going to, we could talk about, uh, we're going to talk about, we are going to talk about relationships or battle of the sexes, okay? Um, which kind of goes hand in hand for some of you guys with minute to win it, right? So we can um, talk about monopoly, which we're going to talk about money, we're going to talk about pain and lying and, and things like that. But we're going to use the, the series of games to kind of try to draw them all together on the same page um, there's some things, you know, I, w I was thinking we could talk about um, Fruit Ninja, right? You guys know that game, Fruit Ninja. We're going to slice the fruit. We could talk about the fruits of the Spirit. Um, we could really go for a long time in this series if we'd like to. So depending on whether you guys are just sleeping, you know, or you're engaged is, is how long we'll probably do it. Another thing that's going to be interesting in this series, it's going to probably go through the summer, you're going to hear from some new preachers. Normally, it's just been Martine or I. And uh, I've, I've talked with, uh, Jason is going to preach um, when the rest of us are at family camp. And we've talked to Raul, he's going to preach a Father's Day message for us during the series. And we're also going, so those will be two new people we haven't heard from. And then we're also going to, at least one week, watch a video in place of me preaching. So you're going to hear some new voices. I'm excited about that. You're going you're gonna to experience some different things in this series. And... Uh, so it'll be interesting where we go. Today, though, um, we're going to start with Pictionary, okay? And we're going to play Pictionary, and uh, here's what... Um, we're going to continue. Now the sermon's going to go a half hour late. But anyway, um, we're going to continue in this series, 
And uh, we're going to talk about the big picture, okay? We've been drawing pictures. We're going to talk about the big picture of Ecclesia. And if you're, if you're a note taker or someone like that, you really want to take all these notes, there's a little note sheet that obviously I spelled the word people in there. Um, it, you can follow along on that note sheet or on your, um, your smartphone. But we're going to today talk about the big picture of Ecclesia. What is it that we do here? What is it that all churches, but specifically our church, Ecclesia, is called to do? And we're going to look at the five biblical purposes today what kind of like there are marching orders as a church this is what the church is called to do and it, it really is the big picture of what we're doing here um, and there's five different areas that we focus on um, and because we're a new church we're not doing great in some of these some of them I think we are and others we really need some work on and so we'll talk about each of those um, the the here's the five biblical purposes of the church and they are worship fellowship ministry discipleship and evangelism. These are the five things that the church is called by God to do, to pursue, to lead out in, in the community. And so we're going to look at some of those things. And, and, and the first one we're going to look at is worship, okay, is worship. Now, if we were to, you know, we've, we talked about this, if we were to choose a game to talk about worship, what game would you use to talk about worship? Think about it. I don't know. Any ideas? Name that tune, because worship has much to do about music, right? Guitar Hero? Guitar Hero? Yeah, perfect. Huh? My God. My God? Yeah. What is that? Is that a game? My Man? Oh, there's a movie. Okay, about it. Any other ideas? So worship does have to do with music, okay? It has a lot to do with music. Name That Tune is probably a, a great game that we could um, look at if we were going to do like a full sermon on it. But worship was in the very beginning, Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to look at some scripture. From the very beginning of time, worship Okay, it was important. Genesis 4, so in the very beginning of your Bible, Genesis 4 says this, verse 26, when Seth grew up, so Seth is Adam and Eve's son. Okay, so uh, this Seth, you know, everyone knows uh, Cain and Abel, that story, Adam and Eve have these sons. Well, they also have more sons, okay, and Seth is one of them. Um, and it says, when Seth grew up, he had a son. So uh, this is the Enosh would have been their grandson. And at that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. So from the very beginning of time on earth, people worshiped God. All the way through the entire Bible, all the way to Revelation, which is in the end of our time here on earth. We look at Revelation 7, 9 and 10. It says this, after, I saw, after this, I saw a vast crowd. Too great to count. This is what's happening in the future. Okay, this is not happening yet. This is John seeing a vision of what's going to happen in the end times. After this, I saw a vast crowd. Too great to count from every nation, tribe, and people, and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. And they were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the land. This is, this is one of the main verses that Ecclesia uses in our worship ministry. We want to see this verse come true here on earth right now. We're trying to bring, this is why we sing in English and Spanish. We're trying to bring, bring people from every nation, every tongue, every background, young, old, hippie, uh, whatever, you know, like everything you can think of, every group of people we're trying to bring together, which is why we're pursuing a multi-ethnic style ministry, not just going after one specific type of whatever, you know, middle-aged family or middle, you know, middle-class family. We're going after every single person to worship is to assign worth, okay? So that's why many times when I pray, after we've sung songs, I'll pray things like, God, you are good, you're mighty, you're powerful, you're, you're majestic, and I'm, I'm affirming those things that have already been said about God. I'm saying those things are true. I believe them to be true. You're worthy of our praise, God. I'll say things like, God, take what we've sung as a serenade to you because we love God and we thank him for what he's done in our lives. Look at first. Peter, verse uh, 9 of chapter 2, it says this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, 
So it says we've been chosen, set apart. For what? Okay, for what? Look at this. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into this wonderful light. We've been set apart as believers in Jesus Christ in order to worship. That's what we've been set apart for, to worship and declare his praises. So how? How do we worship? First of all, uh, Lori Cook back there said we sing songs. Of course, we sing songs. Part of worship is singing, but that's not the only thing. Praying to God, that's part of worshiping, giving of our time and talents and resources. That's worshiping, committing yourself when you hear the word of God and you say, God, I've, I've heard what you've said to me. I'm going to do something about that. That's worship. So worship has all kinds of aspects you know, locked up inside of it. It's more than just singing. And there's this idea that a lot of us probably might only think that worship just happens here at Ecclesia on a Sunday morning. The reality, though, is that we, if we only come and worship on Sunday morning from 10 to 11, then we are missing six, you know, six-sevenths of the picture. We need to be worshipers every single day, telling God, thanking Him for the things that He's done for us, acknowledging that he is Lord of our life. And maybe you do that through song. For me, when I wake up, I, I've been, I kind of go off and on, but like this morning, wake up at 5 a.m., I walk, I pray during my walk, I come back and I watch a worship service from either North Point or Life Church or Saddleback. I watch the worship portion of it, and I spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the morning just singing and praising God through other churches that are, that are you know, worshiping God. And so that's one of the things I do. I try to do that every single day. I don't do it every day, uh, but I try to. It's one of the things that I want to make sure that I'm constantly in a state of worship. The next big picture um, item that we're going to look at is discipleship, okay? Discipleship. Now, discipleship is real simple. It's learning to be like Jesus and then acting like him. That's what discipleship is. It's becoming more and more like Jesus. If we were to do a game, okay, that's learning to be like Jesus and acting like him, what kind of game might you use as an illustration? Simon says, Simon says perfect. What else? Follow the leader. Perfect. Already had it in my notes, dude. You might have saw him when he came up here to pray. <laughs> that's good. No, man, we're right here, dude. We're right there. What else? Games that we could use, like, to talk about that. Anyone? Those are good. So we, we just move on. So there, there's discipleship is truly Simon says, right? Jesus says, do this. We do it. We're, we're following the commands of Scripture. That's what discipleship is all about. Most discipleship here at Ecclesia is aimed at working out in the small group environment, okay? Not so much here. I mean, yes, we do learn, but really in a small group environment, in a, in a smaller group, and really best works in kind of a one-on-one, -on one-on-two mentoring situation, okay? Which I am mentoring, so I'm mentoring three people right now. Kind of a one-on-one, one-on-two scenario where you kind of bring them along and, and you help show them, what, this is what the Word says, this is what we're supposed to do, this is how we are supposed to live. It's, it's one of those things that if we're not doing it, okay, we're missing, and in, we're missing basically the whole point of being a Christian, which is to learn how to live like Jesus. Look at what Jesus specifically says about it. It says this. It, this is one of the things that he says right at the end of his ministry to his followers. It's in Matthew chapter 28. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. That's what we're called to do. Go and make disciples of all nations. Okay? Okay. What else does it say? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey. It's another key part. We're to teach people to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, so the core of discipleship is to know God's commands. How do you know them other than read them in the Bible? Okay, and then to obey them, to know and to obey, to learn and to obey. So it's absolutely important. And like I said, many times, the best case scenario for that to happen is kind of on a one-on-one -on -one relationship. 
where you get together with someone, you study together, and maybe find someone that's a little bit further down the road than you are in their Christian walk, okay? That you can come alongside and say, help me with this principle of being a good husband. I don't get it, right? Or things like that. So that's discipleship. The next one is evangelism, okay? Evangelism. Come on, PowerPoint. Now what evangelism, someone tell me what evangelism is. If, if you were going to use an illustration about evangelism in a game, what game would you use? Right? It's blank. What about go fish? Right? That game go fish. You guys know that's that, that game, right? That go fish. I would use go fish, and here's why. Because Jesus command very specifically in the very beginning of his ministry when he called these men to follow him. Look at this in Matthew chapter 4. It says this. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water. For they fished for a living, and Jesus called out to them and said, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to what? Fish for people. No longer fishing for fish, but fishing for people. <clears throat> and he left their and they left their nets and at once followed him. Probably the most direct passage, okay, in the scriptures where Jesus says that we are to go and evangelize, which is to share the gospel, share your story, is Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That's what Jesus said again right at the very end, kind of like his cliff notes. Hey, Listen, guys, I've been teaching you for three years. Here's what it's all about, okay? Go and make disciples, baptize them in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, okay? Showing them how to live. And he also said this, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everybody. This is an important step for us. So the church, okay, we provide opportunities, okay? The church itself doesn't go and evangelize. It's the people, right? The church members that go and share their personal story, share with someone what God has done for you and how he's changed you and molded you. And, or, or maybe you invite them to church where they can hear the gospel. Maybe you're too sketched out or too afraid to share your story with someone. Great opportunity is to invite them here where they'll hear the gospel. Okay, That's what evangelism is all about. And if we're not sharing our story, we're missing a huge chunk okay, of what we're called to do as a church. Let's continue. Ministry is the next one. This is the fourth thing that, that as a church we're called to do, called to lead out on. Okay? Now think about this. If you were talking about ministry, which is serving people, what game would you think of it? I thought of one, but it might be far out there for okay, it's like a stretch. What would you use if you were gonna talk about serving others? What kind of game would you use to illustrate that? I know you brain, some of your brains are already shot. What? Twister? Why? Because in ministry, you're going to go out on a limb for others and you're going to help other people. Okay. Go on a limb. You're going to go out on a limb and twist yourself around for others. Plus, twister has to do with hands and feet, right? Being the hands and feet of Jesus. Like, just my mind was just blown right now. That's good. What else? Who else? Does anyone else have another one? I thought of one. I thought of tennis. And the reason I thought of tennis is because you serve, and your first serve is always love what? Love all, right? So I'm like, <laughs> love all, serve, love all. So you, that's part of ministry, right? You just love people and serve them. I know it was a stretch, and some of you can, you know, you can write e nasty emails to me later. But anyway, um, ministry is all about helping people, right? It's about going out on a limb and helping them, serving them. Now, at Ecclesia, we have, we have lots of different ministries, three of them currently that are outward focused. Okay, we've got the Uniform Exchange, which many of you know about, where we serve the, the children of Crane School District. So 5,000 some students, um, they, can, they have the ability to come and exchange uniforms here, or um, if they don't have uniforms, we give them a few. That's led by Sally and Jenny. It's a great ministry. Um, we also have our ESL classes, which are free, which is led by Georgia. Um, 
And then we also have Power Pack, which we talked about just a minute ago, which is feeding the 20 kids that are here at this church, which is led by Willene and Kaylin. I wanted to give you, we're starting another ministry, though, too. And I want to ask Mars, come on up here, Mars, grab your microphone wherever he's at. Mars and a few others, and Jason and Asu and Tamra and Martine. Martine's not here. They're starting a new ministry called Celebrate Recovery. Okay, I wanted for them to give you just a little bit of what's going on. Is it, have you turned it on? Hello? No, you haven't turned it on. So anyway, um, you got to turn the thing on. But anyway, we're starting a new ministry. I wanted to give them just a minute, okay? Just literally one minute. One minute. Okay, I'm looking back at the bank. One minute um, to tell us a little bit about what's going on. So start talking out loud, and I'll turn it on for you. So it's, uh, hurry up it's Augie, muted. There you go. Augie gets a little stingy with his time. <laughs> just kidding. I love you. Uh, my name is Mars, and I am a great... suffer with uh, drugs and alcohol and anger and sure I get the mic huh? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Asusena and I suffer from anything else that you didn't hear so I am the catch-all and I represent very well thank you Asu yeah this is CR uh, CR is a program that was designed to help everybody, and I mean everybody and anybody with life's, life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Um, it's, not, it's not just specifically for drugs and alcohol at all. It's for codependency, depression. I mean, you name it, that's what it's for. And it is, it is the, the reason I love it so much is the foundation is in Jesus Christ. That is our foundation. So, um, we're looking to, to try to start in June, early June. Um, we made a little video, and so you guys can kind of just get an idea of what CR is all about. So check it out. So uh, the guys and I on, yeah, on Friday uh, went to Celebrate Recovery because I had never been to a meeting like that, and so I wanted to experience it. Uh, we went Friday to a meeting at uh, Vertical Church. I think it's going to be a great, awesome opportunity for us to minister to literally hundreds of people that live around us here. So I'm excited for that. So, um, and it literally is for anybody, okay? It's not just for um, the people that you think really need recovery. It's for, we all, listen, we we all need recovery, okay? We all are sinners, okay, in need of a Savior. We're all, you know, broken in parts, and so this is going to be a great opportunity for you to come and experience some healing. So that's ministry. My prayer, okay, my prayer for you as a, as a member or visitor or guest or whatever is that you would find your spiritual shape, which you see up on the screen, Okay? You would find where you fit because God has uniquely designed you to fit a very specific okay, job because some of you have spiritual gifts that are unique and some of you have you know, experiences, you have passions, you have skills, and God has molded all of those things in order to make you specifically fill a void in a church somewhere, and our prayer is that you would be involved. And I know some of you, okay, some of you are serving, or like you're in every ministry possible, but I also know some of you just come on Sunday and you're not really serving anywhere. Our prayer is that you would get involved in ministry somewhere, okay, using your unique shape to serve the people of God around you, to serve the outsiders, to get involved in one of these things. And the reality is, is all of these ministries that we have going are really because there were people that were shaped to run them. Okay, God had put a passion in their heart to do something about it, and so they pursued it. And so that's my prayer for you as you would get involved in ministry. The last um, section that we'll look at, the last biblical purpose is fellowship. And for this one, I thought we could do a three-legged race. Okay, because fellowship is really about binding yourself and, you know, binding, tying yourself to one another and walking down, you know, life's road together. That's what fellowship is all about. A lot of people think fellowship, well, that's when you eat. Well, for sure, you do eat sometimes at fellowship because we all have to eat, right? And so 
yes. And some of you are like, I'm ready to eat. Will you shut up? Like, I get that. But like, so for us, three-legged race is kind of the game that I want you to think about. When you think about fellowship, which is accountability, which is coming alongside people like in ministry and saying, let's walk this road together. Fellowship is having a, a, a mentor in your life. Fellowship is, is having that type of accountability. And many times we have these parties, these things called sobre mesa. And the whole point of that party, okay, yes, we're eating food, but the whole point of that thing is that you would sit down to, sit down to dinner with someone that maybe you've not ever talked with. And you talk with them, and you get to know them a little bit. And then my prayer is always, when we have a big party here, my prayer is that when you're talking with someone that you don't really know, that you say to them, hey, why don't we go to Starbucks this week and just like hang out, talk, and get to know each other, and really form a true relationship with some people here. That's what fellowship is all about. It's about doing life together. A lot of that happens in the small group environment because here, I mean, we can't three-legged race. We'd be the 300-leg race, right? I mean, it just wouldn't work. You need a smaller environment. And so Proverbs 27, 17, I know a lot of you guys know this verse. It says, as, our, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We're to learn from each other. We're to model godly behavior for each other and to use the gifts and abilities of our brothers and sisters to help push us and encourage us to be people that are more and more like Jesus. That's my prayer for us. And so the big picture for Ecclesia, okay, the big picture are the five purposes. They're the five biblical purposes. This is, these are really our marching orders. And I want to, I think I preached this about a year and a half ago, I want to make sure that everyone here knows why we're doing what we're doing. These are the main things. This is really kind of the five overall things that we're doing here. I want to make sure that you know why, that you buy into why, and kind of the, the reason behind the reason. Do you know what I mean? These are the reasons behind what we do, why we set up every day, every Sunday, and set all this stuff up and sing songs. It's because we're called to be worshipers of God. Okay, So I want to be clear that there's lots of stuff happening at, at Ecclesia, but it's not just so that way we can stay busy, okay? It's because we've been called to do these things as a church. And my prayer is that if you're not participating in the five biblical purposes, if you're not serving somewhere, you're not in a ministry, then you do. And you step up. If you don't know where you fit here, like maybe you just come on Sunday, you don't really know where you fit. Will you see me after service and say, you know, I'll take you to Starbucks. I won't drink anything there, but I'll take you there because I know you probably will, right? And I try, actually, I tried some coffee the other day. It was nasty. But anyway, <laughs> and Lori and I keep trying. She keeps trying to get me. And I had this thing, and it supposedly didn't taste like coffee. It did. But then Brody got something, and it didn't work, so I switched with him, and his was nasty, and I had to drink it. But anyway, like, I'll take you there, and we'll sit down, we'll talk. I'll say, tell me about, like, what do you love to do? What are you gifted in? And, and we'll find the place for you to serve. That's my prayer. Um, guys, why don't you come forward? Um, my prayer is that you'll find your spot here. You'll get involved, okay? And you'll be part of the overarching, okay, vision of the church, which are these five different things. So see me after service if you're not sure where you fit. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward.